Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today looking at using Instant 3D in SolidWorks to do some form finding. If you're not familiar with Instant 3D, it's a button up here if you're under your Features tab, which allows you to interactively uh, drag handles, dimensions, and bits of geometry around. And if they're dimensioned, there's on-screen rollers and stuff like that, and you can snap per millimeter or per 10 millimeters, etc. So it's a nice way to, you know, accelerate the process of modifying forms without having to go into each sketch or double click a sketch and change the dimension then wait. So it's much more interactive. So I've got four examples that I'm going to run through. First one is this uh, surface and I'm just going to modify the surface to try and sort of fit it to the uh, imported mesh you can see there. And then the next is this uh, surface here, which was a, a K blend or a multi blend. Um, so I'm just going to show you how you can do some form finding on, on some unconstrained surfaces. And then after that, we'll have a look at a blend here on this uh, old retro hairdryer body. And last, some more sort of fine tweaks on this Les Paul body. So this is the Magis Easy Chair. I uh, modeled this a while ago in Rhino. So there's the Rhino model over here, but uh, the Rhino model was built referring to on the Magis website, they've got a mesh file. So for doing some form finding, so you turn on Instant 3D, uh, none of the sketches that define this, this loft are actually constrained. So these splines are all free, meaning instead of dragging a dimension up and down for a point, I can actually grab this point here and I can move it and then the surface will update. So this is quite good if you're trying to look at um, like, like reverse engineering something like this uh, and trying to get something close. Another aid that you might want to use to help with this kind of thing is you go display body compare and you can pick a source body which is our mesh and then compare bodies to our surface and then dial down your tolerance so maybe we'll go within five millimeters, go OK, and then you can hide your mesh body. And we have a legend over here telling us if we're plus or minus. So you can you can sit here and move your points around, whoops, to adjust the uh, the surface, and it's just much quicker than having to go in into the actual each sketch. So you can do this too, like if you've defined these these style spline points in space with dimensions, you can also just adjust the dimensions. But for this purpose, you probably want to race around, you know, and sort of get everything within whatever tolerance you want and then, and then go into your sketches and define them further. So I'm just going to turn that, so you go view, display, body compare off. We'll turn our graphics body back on. Uh, one thing that you might run into, like this corner here, this point here, if I try and drag that, it won't let me because SolidWorks has picked the corner of the surface. So in this case, you probably want to use a filter. Clear all filters, sketch points. Okay, so now it's only going to pick sketch points. So there you go, as you can see, it's picked that sketch point. So now I can drag that around. Pretty quick way to form find. I'm going to jump into the other example now and show you something where I've got a couple of surfaces that are intersecting each other and making a K blend and I'm just going to um, play around with the main surfaces in there and show you how you can sort of do some form finding work there. Okay, so this is a K transition. This is from another old exercise of mine talking about hierarchies of uh, blends, which is dominant blend, etc. So this is made up of, you can see there, one, two, three, four primary surfaces, and then a number of blends running across it. If I turn on my sketches, you can see I've got my main sketches. Um, this surface here is a boundary surface with only two boundaries, one in each direction. And as you can see, they're unconstrained. So that means I can grab this point here and drag it and then it updates. In this case that fillet's failed, so I'll drag that back down. So I can grab this 
point here of the main primary surface, drag that up, and you can see there everything's updated. You can roll back to before all the fillets and trims if you want to just look at the, the base surfaces, which are these, before they've all been trimmed back in together, and grab a point, change the crowning on that surface, and it just updates. So again, you don't have to go into the uh, sketch to modify it, and you don't need to have dimensions on it to modify it. You can just drag the points. Okay, so again, pretty, you know, nice, quick way of form finding. Okay, so I can't drag that point there because I have to turn on a filter. So we just want sketch points. Where are we? There. Yeah. We should be able to drag that one. And then with any luck, if we roll it forward, it will all, okay, almost all rebuilt. Anyway, so you get the point there. I'm going to jump into another example now, which uh, looks at using dimensions instead of having free unconstrained geometry. Okay, so this is from another exercise I completed a few years ago. It's a retro winter hairdryer and I'm just going to look at this particular blend here I've hidden all the other sketches in the file and so this blend it's a four-sided boundary surface and it's got a couple of cross curves that help define the flow of the surface through here so if I turn on my zebra stripes so I've got a custom environment map here uh, like a, a polished orange plastic thing and that was made in HDR Light Studio. And SolidWorks is quite nice because it allows you to use HDR uh, images as zebra stripe maps, meaning you don't get much banding in things that have got graduations. Anyway, I'm digressing. So I can come in here, this sketch here, which has got a, a degree um, five style spine with six CVs, it's got a curvature continuous constraint on each end. I can grab one of these points. If we turn on uh, Instant 3D, I can grab one of these points. So you've got to remember to turn on Instant 3D. Okay, so you can see the second point moving around there, the tangent point. Uh, that's because that is compensating, because I'm moving this one. Okay, so if I wanted to make it fuller, I can do that, and it will update. You can see the reflections change slightly. Or if I want to make it... If I want to bunch it up so the curvature happens much quicker and then it's flatter in the middle, I can do that. But then you see what's starting to happen here. So this is quite good technique for teasing out reflections um, to get to get the reflection you want, get the surface flow. Okay, so that's better there. And sometimes it's little changes uh, in SolidWorks on a surface can actually have quite a large effect. Right, that looked like I was getting an inflection there because that point was down below, so if I drag it up um, and back a bit. And then once I found the reflection, you know, I got the flow going like I wanted, I'd go into those sketches and uh, dimension the, the CV points. Okay, I'll just jump into the last example. Just do a bit of spinning on the gloss. Uh, last example is the Les Paul body. So this is a highly constrained surface. Uh, primary surface here, which is trimmed back to allow the building of two four-sided surfaces on each end. We have a look at the zebra stripes on this one. So this again was another SolidWorks exercise, uh, which you can find online. And in fact, I'll put the I'll put the links to all these in the description so you can because these models are available for download. So with Instant 3D, if we double click like that surface there, it'll bring up all the dimensions from uh, everything that's controlling that surface. So. Uh, it gets quite granular now because this is, as I said, it's highly constrained. So if we wanted to tweak the form over here, you can also see the curvature graph on. 
um, we'll just grab this this sketch here and you can drag that round and if you move your pointer up to where the ruler is it will snap your dimensions and then it will update so this angle here if we drag that around um, depending on the complexity of the surface sometimes it will update in real time when you drag these around but obviously with this one there's some other functions like there's trims and then there's these other surfaces that are further down the tree so that means the surface won't update uh, in real time if we roll back to the surface so we've just got that main surface there and now double click it I might be able to modify it in real time we'll have a look yeah so you can see the reflections are updating in real time there's a little bit of lag there possibly to do with the with the um, display image quality I have settings I have on this model so if you roll those down uh, it might be a bit more fluid but it's still quite nice to be able to tweak a surface in real time and see what your effects are right I think I'll wrap this up here so as I said I'll put these models in the description so there's four models four older SOLIDWORKS exercises that I've completed um, and just yeah instance 3d for form form finding so under the features tab at the top instance 3d okay thanks for watching andrew jackson aj design studio see ya